choir folder.
Holy God, we abandon ourselves into your hands. You are invited to gather. Do with us what you will. And to worship. Whatever you may do, we thank you. You are invited to grow. We are ready for all. We accept all. And to serve. Let only your will be done in us and in all your creatures. You are invited to receive. Into your hands, we commend our souls and to praise. We offer them to you with all the love of our hearts, for we love you, Lord, and so need to surrender ourselves. You are invited to Franklin First, without reserve, United Methodist Church, and with boundless confidence. We're so glad that you're here with us today. For you are our creator. Welcome to worship. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Franklin First United Methodist Church here on this Sunday morning. We are so grateful that y'all are here with us today so that we can be gathered together, whether we are in person or gathered via live stream. We are excited to get to worship the Lord together on this day. As we prepare for worship, I will remind you, as I always do, if you would like to mark your attendance with us, there's two ways you can do that. One is with the Franklin First app. Using your smartphone, you can check yourself in. You can do that like all the way until about halfway through the service. And then uh, you can also use the iPads that we find out in Friendship Commons. You just type in your phone number and it brings up your household. If you ever have issues wanting to check in with us, then just let our staff know and we'd be happy to help you figure that out. And if you're a visitor, if you're new to us, either as a first-time visitor or maybe you've been here for a bit and you've not really connected with us, then we would love to meet you. And you can either type in the keyword coffee to let us know that you're new and visiting or you can meet us at the Welcome Tower after worship and our staff would love to greet you there and give you a little welcome goodie and just make sure that you feel welcome here in this place. So I have three things to share with you this morning. The first is kind of a teaser of what is to come in worship. Um, we will have communion today, so make sure if you are joining us at home that you have your elements prepared. Um, we'll explain everything, the flow of communion, but know that if you need gluten-free, those elements are in the back, still in the individually prepared, the safest uh, little containers that we can offer you. Also in worship today, we are going to commission and acknowledge our new Stephen Ministers. And Stephen Ministry is a caring ministry. These folks have gone through so 
much training to work one-on-one -on -one with members of the congregation or the community that are going through a tough season for whatever reason. And our Stephen ministers walk with them one-on-one. -on -one. They meet with them weekly. They pray with them. A very, very special ministry. And so we're going to acknowledge them in worship today. But if you are interested in learning more about Stephen ministry, if you maybe think you might be sensing a call to a caring ministry, or maybe you're going through a tough time and you think, I could really, really... Um, benefit from having somebody just stand with me in this season, then our Stephen ministers are going to be out in Friendship Commons, and so you can find them by the welcome desk, and they would be happy to give you as much information that you are interested in. So we're looking forward to celebrating our new Stephen ministers. Also coming up is Coffee and Conversation. So typically we offer that at two different dates um, per month, but this month I want you to see that we are only offering it on the morning offering, so May 6th at 10 a.m. So we will be learning about the Silver Alert System. So if you are familiar with the Amber Alert System when there's a missing child, for our seniors that experience um, memory and cognitive issues, often we find that a Silver Alert is a way of notifying folks when someone has gone missing, they're not where they need to be. So we would love for you to join us for that. As always, Coffee and Conversation has an in-person and online way for you to participate. And we do want you to sign up. That just helps us make sure that we have all of the supplies ready for you. And then finally, coming up this week, this Tuesday, we have 19 Miles. So we have mentioned to you that it is the three-year anniversary of 19 Miles, which is so exciting. Also, Keith Thomas, he's the Inside the Hits um, musician. So he is a Grammy Award-winning singer-songwriter, and he has worked with um, Amy Grant and Vanessa Williams, just to name a few of the many folks. So every 19 miles is really wonderful, and we always want you to attend and invite your friends. But a little, uh, a little extra today is you never know when a special guest might show up. So I cannot confirm something, but... I think you should make sure that you make it to this 19 miles. I promise you won't regret it. It's going to be a great one. You never know who's going to show up. So we'd love for you to join us for 19 miles this coming week. <sighs> I sometimes feel like I talk really fast. So maybe if you need to take a breath too, why don't we all do that? <sighs> it's communion Sunday. It's the time to worship. What a gift. What a gift to be gathered together here and everywhere to worship the Lord on this day. Welcome to worship. Good morning, friends. We are so glad to be with you, whether you're with us here in the house or worshiping at your house, wherever you are. A new month, a communion Sunday, a new worship series that we will focus on today called The Charge to Keep. We'll be talking about God's call for our lives as individuals and as a congregation, but particularly how God's call affects you and what God might charge you to do in God's service. It is a good day to be here. It is a glorious day outside. I want to echo what Carlisle says because, baby, baby, you never know who might show up at 19 miles, y'all. I'm just, just saying, you just never know who might show up. Friends, as we turn our hearts and minds towards God, would you join me in our opening prayer as we stand together as we're able? These words will be on the screen, and they capture the heart of where our spirits will point during this time of worship. Will you pray with me? I'm sorry, that is, a, that is actually the prayer from Palm Sunday, I can already see. So why don't you let me pray, and we'll do it that way. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I give you my hands to do your work. I give you my feet to walk in your way. I give you my tongue to speak your word. And I give you my heart that through me you may love the Father and every human soul today and always. In your own name we pray, amen. Friends, let's worship together. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. Let's sing together. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I'll follow. Church, you're very familiar with this song. Let's raise our voices this morning and declare God's goodness and that we commit ourselves to following you this morning. I will trust in you alone. You're up in my side, high above my life. I will trust in you alone.
receiving something from the Lord. We're about to sing about asking the Lord to lead us, for the Spirit to move us. Take this time to pray before singing, before worshiping, about where the Lord might be leading you.
serve in that knowledge. You may be seated, friends. It is a joy today, among many things we'll do that are joyful, to recognize and commission new Stephen ministers. These dear folks have completed nearly a year of training um, in which they have learned the art and skill of engaging with people in a spiritual way to give guidance in times of crisis, to be a friend who walks alongside folks. They are available to serve you. You'll find them many Sundays out in the, in the chapel just beyond the, the narthex here in, in Friendship Commons there to, to be with you as you pray, to pray with you if you like, or simply to, to be a guiding friend. If you ever have an interest or need perhaps of a Stephen minister, you can contact our congregational care team. You can contact Pastor Carlisle, and we'd be more than pleased to connect you with these folks. Now, we're going to recognize them at all three services, but I think I see just about everybody here today at this service. So I'm going to call an audible, which when you're kind of the quarterback, you can do, right? So would our Stephen ministers who are being commissioned, would y'all come up to the front? Can I embarrass you a little bit? I don't mean to embarrass you. Just come to the front, and Andrea and Suzanne, if you want to come with them, Andrea Thomas and Suzanne Knight are they're fearless leaders. And just kind of line yourselves up there as best you can. I want everybody to be able to get a good look at you. Outstanding. <laughs> I'm going to name these folks and the, the, the ones who are here. We may not have everybody at this service, but uh, they can wave at you and you can see them. So today we are going to be commissioning the following folks. Ed Cannon, Renee Finley, <laughs> Brad Jensen, Deborah Lotz, Amy Martin, Jeff Miller, Susan Sanders, and Seal Waters. We are so proud of these folks for the commitment they've already shown and look forward to the ministry ahead for them as they provide care to God's people in the name of our Lord. We're going to offer a prayer, and uh, I'll invite you to pray with me. Lord, bless these who have felt a call to love and serve others through Stephen Ministry. Grant them wisdom and listening hearts to bring healing and hope to those whom they serve. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, would you help me recognize and congratulate these folks and their leaders?
Thank you all. Now be sure to put them to work, guys. I want you to do that. God bless you all. Always good to get to share some of the ways in which our congregation can serve and go, as we often mention during this time of the offering and worship, that we bring ourselves in praise, we bring our voices in our presence, but we also bring the gifts of our service, one of the many things that God invites us into in the life of following Jesus. But one of the things that God also invites us into is the giving back of our resources, that all that God has given to us, that we return to the Lord, trusting that God is the one who receives our offering, receives our tithes, and uses it to go and bless this world, to make this world look a bit more like the kingdom of God. And so I'll remind you, there are several ways in which you can make a financial offering this Sunday morning. So through the link that you see on the screen through our website, as well as through the Franklin First app, you can make a one-time gift, but you can also set up a recurring gift if that's easier for you to keep that in mind that it's going to happen automatically. You can uh, leave your offering or tithe in our secure lockbox outside the Circle Drive or mail it into the church. We also have offering stations in the corners of this room as well as when you make your way back out into Friendship Commons. And today during our offertory, our ushers are available. They will be passing the plate throughout the sanctuary. So many ways in which you can make a financial offering today, but whether it's the plate or an app or a website or you're dropping something in a box, we believe this is a holy and sacred act of giving back to the Lord and trusting ourselves in God's care. So if you would, please join me as we pray a blessing over our offering today. Let us pray. Spirit, lead us where our trust is without borders. Spirit, lead us. Help us to give on this day. Help us to give each and every day of our gifts, knowing that when we do, that you are faithful in receiving, that you are faithful in using and multiplying and building and planting and sowing and reaping with the gifts that we bring. So we thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to be invited into your ministry. We ask that you would give us generous hearts and be with us as we open our hands and trust our resources into your care, knowing that they are well-received and going towards the work of seeking first your kingdom. Please, Lord, bless the offering and the tithe that we bring today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Oh, Lord, I 
God from whom all blessings flow and raise him all creatures here below and raise him above the heavenly Would you please remain standing for the reading of God's holy word? Today's scripture is taken from the book of Leviticus, chapter 8, verses 22 through 36. Then he brought forward the second ram, the ram of ordination. Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram, and it was slaughtered. Moses took some of its blood and put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. After Aaron's sons were brought forward, Moses put some of the blood on the lobes of their right ears, and on the thumbs of their right hands, and on the big toes of their right feet. And Moses dashed the rest of the blood against all sides of the altar. He took the fat, the broad tail, all the fat was around the entrails, the appendage of the liver, and the two kidneys with their fat, and the right thigh from the breath basket of unleavened bread that was before the Lord. He took one cake of unleavened bread, one cake of bread with oil and one wafer and placed them on the fat and on the right thigh. He placed all of these on the palms of Aaron and on the palms of his son and raised them as an elevation offering before the Lord. Then Moses took them from their hands and turned them into smoke on the altar with the burnt offering. This was an ordination offering with, uh, for a pleasing odor, an offering by fire to the Lord. Moses took the breast and raised it as an elevation offering before the Lord. It was Moses' portion of the ram of ordination as the Lord commanded Moses. Then Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood that was on the altar and sprinkled them on Aaron and his vestments 
and also on his sons and their vestments. Is that we begin today. In fact, we take our title from that hymn. Now, over the next four Sundays, counting today, the words of this little hymn are going to speak to us. It's a short hymn, honestly. can feel kind of choppy. You're going to hear a beautiful rendition of it a little bit later. But, but it's a powerful song. It's a powerful song at its heart. This hymn, A Charge to Keep I Have, is anchored in one primary belief. It is anchored in something you've heard before that's called the priesthood of all believers. That's what it's anchored in, the priesthood of all believers. You remember that phrase from a few weeks ago when we talked about ministry in the United Methodist Church? I named it. The priesthood of all believers is the idea that every single Christian is called to and responsible for the ministry of Jesus Christ. Every Christian Every believer is called to and responsible for the ministry of Jesus Christ. Yes, we have pastors, we have ministers ordained or licensed for that kind of work. But the work of Christian ministry, the work of sharing and living out the gospel, is not confined to people who are ordained and wear stuff like this or have reverend in front of their name. The work of ministry is entrusted to us, not actually in ordination, but in our baptism, in our baptism, every baptized person, every Christian, every disciple of Jesus Christ is responsible for ministry. Every one, every one. That's the priesthood of all believers. That's who we are, and that is a fundamental declaration of Charles Wesley's hymn. So here's what verse 1 says. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save, and fit it for the sky. Look at that one more time with me. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save, and fit it for the sky. Now, now if you can get over the fact that Charles Wesley wrote a little bit like Yoda taught, mm, a charge to keep I have, mm, yes, mm. see what I mean? It's a pretty good Yoda, you got to say. It's easily the best one you've heard today, right? If you can get over that, if you can get over the, the word order, we can get down to business because the very title of this hymn comes from our passage today. Did you notice? Right from Leviticus 8.35, at the conclusion of this ceremony that Rex described for us, which is, of course, you saw an ordination service, an ordination ceremony. At the conclusion of this ceremony described here in which Moses designates his brother Aaron and his family as priests, Moses delivers a final instruction to Aaron. Do you remember what he says? Moses says, you, Aaron, you shall remain at the entrance of the tent of meeting. It's where the people gathered to worship. You shall remain at the entrance of the tent of meeting day and night for seven days. Keeping the Lord's charge. Keeping the Lord's charge so that you do not die. For so I am commanded. And there it is. Aaron is bound with keeping the Lord's charge. Keeping the Lord's charge as part of his service to God. And in that, Charles Wesley, as poets and preachers are inclined to do, and he was both, he found an inspiration from the Spirit of God, and he runs with it. A charge to keep, I have. A charge to keep, I have. And this is what Charles's hymn tells us. We have a responsibility to God. We often think, sometimes we're told, that our Christian life, coming to church, is about us being filled up. And that's not wrong. God does the filling. But we have a responsibility in turn. 
We have a responsibility to God, us collectively, and you, and me individually. We have a charge, a charge. And I know we don't use that word very much that way anymore. It's a way of using that word that's starting to feel a little antiquated. Although, did you know when, in my case, the bishop appoints me to a church, the, the, the official way we talk about that is my charge? You know we have a charge conference. That's where that comes from, a charge. It's, a, it's an antiquated way, maybe, but it's, it's actually very powerful. It means we, we are charged with, we are entrusted with, we are burdened with, we are called to live our lives as servants of God. And if Charles Wesley is right, that is and should be the most important thing about us. The fact that we are called by God, the fact that we, you and me, you, we are entrusted with a charge from God. That should color, shape, influence, inform, and frankly direct every single thing we do. Everything, not just here on a Sunday morning, but wherever you are on a Monday morning, or a Tuesday morning, or a Wednesday afternoon, or a Thursday at lunch, or a Friday, or a Saturday. The fact that we have a charge from God as Christian people should inform and color everything that we do. Whatever we are, however we spend our days, whatever your vocation Whatever our situation, you and I, we are charged by God to live out the gospel in what we do. If you are a teacher, if you are a parent, if you are a banker, if you are a farmer, if you are in sales, if you are retired, if you are in school, if you are an engineer, if you are a programmer, if you are an officer of the law, if you are an attorney, if you are in retail, if you make cars, if you are a gardener, if you are a chef, if you are a builder, if you are in real estate, if you are a designer, if you are a beautician, if you are a dentist, if you are a musician, if you are a physician, if you are a volunteer, if you are a philanthropist, If you are unemployed, if you are overemployed, whatever you do, if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, and my sense is I'm talking to a room full of disciples of Jesus Christ, if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, then there's no question about this. You are a servant of God. And that means God has a charge for you to keep. A charge to keep that will serve the Lord and in that keeping will prepare you for eternal life, for heavenly life, for everlasting life with God. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. And my question is, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Are you content to let other folks carry the weight of ministry? The doing, the giving, the serving? Or do you believe it? A charge to keep, I have. Do you believe it? Can you accept it? Will you receive it? You belong to God. That is glorious and good news. You belong to God. And because we belong to God, that means God has a responsibility for you to attend to. A role for you to fulfill, a charge for you to keep. And as we walk alongside our guide for this, Charles Wesley, This is where we begin. Will you keep the charge God has for you? We'll explore it over the next several weeks, but will you keep the charge God has for you?
We are not only called, but we are nourished, nourished at the table of the Lord. And so we turn our attention now to Holy Communion. Remember that when the time comes to be served, we'll have three stations across the front here, one off to the side to my right, one here in the middle, and one off to my left. The ushers will guide you to release you row by row, and you're welcome to come. You're welcome to stop and to pray here at the altar rails, if you like. Folks on this side, just navigate the bell tables. You'll, you'll do that safely, I know. We are excited as we return to communion in person in this way to also, you'll find at each station someone holding a basket for communion offering. We return to communion offering today, and today's offering will go to Project Transformation, something that we love and know here as part of this church's life. Our own Courtney Aldrich, the founder of Project Project Transformation Tennessee here, getting ready to, to rev up for their summer season as they bless children and families with the gift of learning and support of their reading and fellowship and fun. So if you're moved when you come to communion to give an offering there, it'll go to Project Transformation. Friends, Pastor Carlisle will attend at the table as I lead us through the liturgy that guides us through this meal by which we are served and prepared to serve. Will you join me? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another as together we pray and say, Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have have not not loved loved our neighbors, neighbors, and we have have not not heard heard the cry of the needy. Forgive Forgive us, us, we pray. pray. Free us for joyful obedience. obedience. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, hear the good news that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, holy, holy holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. died. Christ Christ is is risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on all those who worship you today. And on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, friends, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as our Lord has taught and as together we say, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved friends, the body and blood of Christ given for us. If our servers will come, we will give them the elements and we'll go to our stations and then we will share as guests at the table of the Lord.
I still can't get over how good that feels. Thanks be to God. We are charged, friends. I know in some context that is not the word you want to hear. But as servants of God, there is no better news. We are charged with sharing the burden of Christ's ministry to this world. And fresh off Holy Week and Easter, we know that that burden is a blessing. That burden that Christ bore for us is one that we gladly bear in his name. I don't know what all of you do, (laughs) but I know what you're called to. I know that you are called, you specifically are called by the Lord to share in the work of ministry. Over these next weeks together, may we listen closely. Take time at these altar rails. There are two little stations for prayer that you can linger after the service if you like. Listen for God's call. Hone in on how God is calling you and know that we are here to support you in living out and keeping that charge. Let us worship God with our lives as well as our words. Will you stand and join us as we sing once more our praise to the Lord. Friends, as we sing this beautiful hymn, A Charge to Keep, you'll be prompted, men and women. There's a call and response part in this in the song. I'm going to sing it for you so you can, you can hear it once, and then we'll sing this together. I will watch and pray. I will rely on nothing else. And I will watch and pray. I will rely on nothing else. And I will watch and pray. I will rely on nothing else. And you alone. And you alone. And I will watch and pray. I will rely on nothing else. And I will watch and pray. I will rely on nothing else. And I will watch and pray. I will rely on nothing else. And you alone. And you alone. A charge to keep I have. And I will 
Leviticus 8, Charles Wesley, you've been given some new gifts this morning, friends, but those gifts remind us of one thing, we share in the ministry of God, we share in the ministry of the gospel, we go as servants of Jesus Christ, every one of us, a charge to keep. So, go, and as you go, may you find that Christ has gone before you, and he's prepared the way for your ministry, as you go to love and serve in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you for joining us today. It's been such an honor to worship with you as part of the congregation of Franklin First United Methodist Church. For information about how you can become connected with our community of faith, you can find us at franklinfumc.org. From there, you can sign up to receive our newsletter, find ways to serve, share your prayer requests, and make offerings that further the mission of this church. Please be sure and join us again next week. We'll be here at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.15. It's great to have you with us today. God bless you all. We hope you have a great week.
holy God, we abandon ourselves into your hands. You are invited to gather. Do with us what you will. And to worship. Whatever you may do, we thank you. You are invited to grow. We are ready for all. We accept all. And to serve. Let only your will be done in us and in all your creatures. You are invited to receive. Into your hands we commend our souls. And to praise. We offer them to you with all the love of our hearts. For we love you, Lord, and so need to surrender ourselves. You are invited to Franklin First. Without reserve. United Methodist Church. And with boundless confidence. We're so glad that you're here with us today. For you are our creator. Welcome to worship. Amen. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to Franklin First United Methodist Church on this Sunday morning. We are so grateful that y'all are here with us today. Whether you are joining us for worship in person or via live stream, know that we are touched that you have made Franklin First a part of your Sunday morning, and we are eager to worship alongside you. As we prepare for worship, I will invite you, if you would like to mark your attendance with us, I'll let you know there's two different ways you can do that. You can use the Franklin First app on your smartphone to let us know that you are here, or we have some iPads out in Friendship Commons, which you will be able to use at least halfway through this service. And so we'd love for you to mark your attendance that way. If you are a visitor, or maybe for the first time, or you've been here a few times, but you've not connected with us, then we would really love to meet you. You can meet us out at the Welcome Tower after worship ends, or you can type in the keyword coffee, which lets us know if you're a live stream participant that you are new here. Um, whether you've been here many times or this is your first time, please know that we hope that you feel very welcome here. A few things to prepare us for our time of worship. The first is, it is the first Sunday of the month, and so we will have Holy Communion together. And uh, the ushers will guide you, and you'll be instructed. We'll move to the left, come up to your station, move back. If you need gluten-free elements, know that those are available out in the um, narthex between Wesley Hall and Friendship Commons. Those are just individually prepared elements. So if you need those, please make sure that you have them by the time um, communion happens. And for those of you participating via live stream, make sure that you gather your elements, bread, crackers, juice, whatever you have on hand would be great. And we are excited to gather at the table. Also happening today in worship, we will acknowledge our newly commissioned Stephen ministers. So I wanted to say a brief word about our Stephen ministers. They are, this is a caring role. So our Stephen ministers go through significant training. And these are members of this congregation who work one-on-one -on -one with folks that are going through a tough season for any reason. It doesn't really matter why you might come to that point of saying, I could really use somebody to walk with me through this, but our Stephen ministers are there. And so we will acknowledge them in worship. But if you have ever felt like maybe you're sensing a call into a caring ministry and you'd like to learn more about Stephen ministry, or if you are at a place in your life where you are thinking, you know, this would be a ministry that I would really need to be served by. I need somebody to pray with me and to offer me support during this time. We are going to have our Stephen ministers out in Friendship Commons by the welcome desk. And so they are there and available. They've got the blue name tags. And so you can find them if you want to find out any more information about Stephen ministry for whatever reason. Also want to bring to your attention that we have coffee and conversations coming up. Typically, coffee and conversation is an evening and a morning offering, but due to um, the, the experts that are coming to guide us, we're only going to have a morning offering. So if you are interested in participating, please make sure that you note that on May 6th at 10 a.m. in person or a Zoom option for you to participate. The topic for this month is the silver alert system. So maybe you are more familiar with the amber alert system, a note when a child has gone missing, but the silver alert system is a wonderful resource to help us make sure that we are able to keep track and communicate when maybe somebody who has memory issues has gotten confused and is, you know, not in the place where they need to be. And that is a safety issue. So this is an important topic for all of us as memory care affects, you know, really one in three of us these days. So we hope that you can join us for Coffee and Conversation this month. And then finally, it is this week the three-year anniversary of the launching of 19 Miles. So this is a live music event that takes place here in Franklin. You don't have to drive to Nashville. It's here in Franklin, 6.30 on Tuesday, May 3rd this month. So Keith Thomas, he is a Grammy Award-winning writer, and he's worked with, you know, just some small names like Amy Grant, Vanessa Williams, 
Just kidding, those are big names, you should come. So Keith is going to be here, and not only should you come and hear about the songs that he has um, written and hear about some of the artists he's works with, but I have it on good word that a very special guest is coming. I can't say who, but you do not wanna miss this. It is gonna be a really, really special 19 miles, and I promise that it will be a wonderful evening. So all of our 19 miles are a great way to spend your time, a great way to hear some live music, but this one, I promise you will not wanna miss not only for Keith Thomas himself, but for a special friend that he is bringing. <sighs> Here we are. It's worship, y'all. I really, I really do mean it when I say it every week that it's one of the best parts of my week to get to worship with you each and every Sunday. So we are very grateful that you are here. We are excited to have communion with you and to worship and to praise. Welcome to worship. Thank you. 
Amen. What a good way to start a new month, a new worship series. It is good to see y'all on this beautiful Sunday morning. I am excited not only about worship, but as Carlisle mentioned, 19 miles happening this week. And you know, while we can't promise who would be here, with every heartbeat, baby, baby, do I want to encourage you to come because you just never know, baby, baby, who might show up. Anyhow, outstanding. Friends, we will share Holy Communion today. We begin a new worship series called The Charge to Keep, and we'll talk more about that very, very soon. We begin, as we do most Sundays, with a call to worship. So I'll invite you to stand and to turn your eyes towards the screens and to join me as we turn our hearts and minds towards God and enter into this time of worship. How shall the gospel be proclaimed that sinners may repent? How shall the world find peace at last? if heralds are not sent. So send us, Lord, for we rejoice to speak of Christ with life and voice. Highland, what shall we sing this morning? Pastor Brian, we begin our singing with To God Be the Glory. Join with us as we sing together.
great things our Lord has done. We go to God in prayer with the words of our opening prayer, which will be on the screens. Will you pray these words with me? Lord Jesus, I give you my hands to do your work. I give you my feet to walk in your way. I give you my tongue to speak your word. And I give you my heart that through me you may love the Father and every human soul today and always. Amen. We sing again. We sing again with glorify thy name. Join with us again. seated. Friends, as Pastor Carlisle mentioned, it is a joy today to recognize some folks who have already received a great deal of training for a very special ministry in the life of our congregation. Today we recognize new Stephen ministers. We'll be recognizing these folks at all three of our services here on the main campus today. But some folks were at the early service, and some will be at the third service. So I simply want to invite any of our this year's commissioning class of Stephen ministers to stand where they are if they're in the building, if they're here. Very good. There's Seal and Brad over there. And then others, and here's the rest of the crew over here. Um, and I see there's, well, I'm going to read their names. I don't know why I'm trying to call them right now. I'm going to read their names in just a second. And then may I ask, if there are other Stephen ministers among us here today, would you stand as well so we might see you? We're not commissioning you, but we're very good. And if you'll remain standing just a moment, there you go, BJ, thank you, stand back up, very good, there you go, super. Friends, allow me to read the names of those being commissioned this year. We are so proud and grateful to commission Ed Cannon, Renee Finley, Brad Jensen, Deborah Lotz, Amy Martin, Jeff Miller, Susan Sanders, and Seal Waters. We offer this prayer of thanksgiving and commissioning. Will you pray with me? Lord, bless these who have felt a call to love and serve others through Stephen ministry. Grant them wisdom and listening hearts to bring healing and hope to those whom they serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Along with these ministers, their leaders are uh, Andrea Thomas and Suzanne Knight. And I wonder if you'd join me in giving them all a round of applause and gratitude. You now may be seated. <laughs> Thank you. Call upon these folks as you face crises or challenges in your life. They are trained to walk alongside you in the name of Christ. You can reach out to Pastor Carlisle, our ministry team, and we'd be more than happy to connect you with them. You'll often find a Stephen minister from week to week waiting in the E.M. Bounds Chapel just beyond uh, this sanctuary in Friendship Commons there to be there to pray with you, to walk with you. Uh, we are grateful for their ministry. Thank you. It's always good when we have a chance to witness some of the gifts of God at work, some of the gifts of our congregation being able to serve. As we do often mention during this time of the offering that we give to the Lord in many ways, right? We give with bringing our presence and worship, our voices and praise, our lives and the acts of service, but also in the giving of our gifts. 
And as we rejoice and praise the Lord, we acknowledge that this is one of the many ways that God invites us into God's ministry as we are all active and working and towards seeking the kingdom here on earth. So I will remind you that there are several ways in which you can make a financial offering or your tithe this Sunday morning. There is a link on the screen that goes to our website as well as the Franklin First app. Both of those give you the option to give a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift that just automatically um, will be given if you're like me and you need that little that support to make sure that it gets there. You also, um, we have offering stations in the four corners of this room as well as when you, when you make your way back out into Friendship Commons. And uh, you can always mail your offering or leave it in the secure lockbox. But also today, we will have our ushers passing our offering plates throughout the room. So you are welcome to um, pass it even if you give and digitally or give in other ways. We're excited to be able to pass that from hand to hand, from friend to friend down the aisle. So we are looking forward to um, receiving our offering in many different ways because we know that when we give our offering, God is the one who receives it and God is the one who will take these gifts and use them to continue to build God's kingdom here on earth. And so I'd like to ask, if you would, please join me as we pray a blessing over our offering today. Let us pray. Holy God, we come before you and we offer our voices in praise. We offer our lives in service, but we also offer our gifts because, Lord, we know that out of all that you have given to us, that you are allowing us to give back, doing so as an act of worship, as an act of praise, as an act of trust, acknowledging that we believe that you are indeed the one who is faithful in receiving and using these gifts. And so on this day, Lord, we open our hands and we bring our offerings to your feet and we trust that they will go to continuing to plant seeds and to grow fruit here on our earth. And so Lord, as we bring these gifts before you now, we ask that you would bless them and use them for your work. It is in your name we pray, amen. Thank you. 
Please remain standing for this morning's scripture, which comes from Leviticus chapter 8, verses 22 through 36. Then he brought forward the second ram, the ram of ordination. Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram, and it was slaughtered. Moses took some of its blood and put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear and on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. After Aaron's sons were brought forward, Moses put some of the blood on the lobes of their right ears and on the thumbs of their right hands and on the big toes of their right feet. And Moses dashed the rest of the blood against all the sides of the altar. He took the fat the broad tail, all the fat that was around the entrails, the appendage of the liver, and the two kidneys with their fat, and the right thigh. From the basket of unleavened bread that was before the Lord, we need a doctor in the house, it looks like. Yes. As our medical professionals attend, will you pray with me? Father, we pray your presence with us now. Let your spirit descend on this place. Be around. Be present. Be with the doctors and the nurses, the people giving care in this moment. We pray that your spirit would fill us, that you would give us a sense of calm, that you would hold us in the palm of your hand. We pause now, God, to lift our own prayers to you. Lord, hear these prayers that we raise in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite you to be seated. And simply to give the folks giving attention to do what they need to do. For those worshiping with us online, we appreciate your patience. And we ask you to bear with us. Friends, as our trained medical personnel continue to give care, would you continue to be in a mind and a spirit of prayer?
Thank you for your patience and your calm. We're waiting for emergency vehicles and personnel to arrive. We'll continue in our time of prayer. Father, as those equipped to give emergency care come, we pray your angels would guide them, that you would open the doors and open the paths quickly to this place. Surround us with your care and hear your people as we lift our hearts to you. My friends, Brother Jackson is feeling better, and the stretcher's on the way, so we give thanks to the Lord for this. Amen? Amen. I'm so grateful to the people who were so prepared when this happens, and grateful for those coming in to bring in the stretcher. In just a moment... We are going to proceed and share Holy Communion. You will be deeply disappointed to know that I'm not going to preach. <laughs> now, the laughter I expected. <laughs> the one person who began to applaud, I'll need your name, okay? <laughs> Friends, we do want to keep an attitude of prayer and solemnity. But uh, I am so grateful for those responding here. We want to give them just a moment to continue to do their saving work as we are in the house of the one who does saving work. We will continue with Holy Communion in just a moment. And as they continue to, to do what they need to do, I'll remind you that uh, as we have begun to take Holy Communion together in person again, oh, the doctor's coming. Daniel McGinley, Dr. Daniel, this is doctor's orders, okay? Daniel and his family come to the first service. He hereby prescribes to you, go online when you get home and listen to the sermon. Daniel said, <laughs> I hate to put words in a man's mouth, but he was right here. Daniel said, probably the most important sermon since the Sermon on the Mount Thank you, Daniel. That's enough out of you. That's enough out of you. Thank you so much. Now, it is kind of a, a, a marvelous thing. So, it, yeah, I'm going to, no more. I'm going to preach two sermons next week uh, in this time. No, I'll just go on with part two next week, and uh, it'll be just slightly more confusing than it usually am when I preach. So, um, but you can go and hear those online at our YouTube page. You can find it on Facebook Live. You can go through the church website. In a moment, as we uh, begin, uh, this will be the second month back with Holy Communion, as we used to practice it, and now are practicing it again in person. I'll remind you that there'll be six stations around the room. There'll be two over here, off to my right, on the little carpeted area. And so y'all remember this from last month, if you were here, or if you weren't, you'll want to go to your left here. You'll go out your left, ushers will guide you. And so the folks in the back, there'll be a station about halfway back, and folks 
here at the front, this front section, there will be a station here. There will be two stations in this aisle, and again, ushers will guide you, and you folks in the middle will come out and go left, and you'll come down, and there will be a station about halfway back and a station here at the front. And then over here to my left, for y'all in the far, you're only far from me, you're not far, but uh, y'all over here, there will be a station in the middle uh, of the aisle there and one up here at the front as well, and the ushers will guide you. This month, in addition to going back to communion in person, um, being served, we're also reinstating our communion offering. So at each station, there'll be someone with a basket. And uh, this month's communion offering, all, as you remember, these always go to one of our mission partners. And uh, uh, this month, it'll go to Project Transformation. Project Transformation, led by our own Courtney Aldrich, founded uh, as the founding executive director that Courtney is. And uh, as you know, Project Transformation is a ministry that goes throughout the summer that involves college-age folks who come and do internships, see about what ministry in person looks like. They work with children, school-age children, in a ministry of keeping their reading skills up and strong during the summertime. There's also elements of uh, fellowship and fun with families. Project Transformation is an incredible ministry. You'll have a chance to volunteer to go read with some of the kids, to perhaps take part in a family fun night, they call it. And um, so our offering today, our, our Project Transformation mission offering, uh, that'll be when you come to take communion if you feel led to leave a gift in the baskets. That'll be what happens. So um, we're grateful for the opportunity to return to that. I'm going to let our folks continue to do their work. Um, but as we prepare, I'm going to invite Pastor Carlisle to make her way here to attend to the table. And I'm going to hear one word from Brother Cortland. Cortland helping me with logistics here to help our folks here do what they need to do. We're just going to ask our folks who are serving communion, we're just going to serve here up at the three stations at the front. And so everything I just said, like so much, just throw that away. <laughs> just throw that right out. We're going to have three stations. So the folks scheduled to serve at stations one, two, and three, you'll come up. And same sort of thing. Uh, if y'all, you, you get it. You know what? Find a place and take communion, doggone it. And that'll be the best thing to do. <laughs> Would you watch the screens with me? And together we'll celebrate being guests at the table of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another, as together we pray and say, Merciful, Merciful God, God, we confess that we, that we have, have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have failed to be an obedient church. church. We, we have, have not done, done your will. will. We, we have, have broken, broken your, your law. law. We have rebelled against your love. We have we not, not loved our neighbors, neighbors. and we, we have, have not heard the cry of the needy. needy. Forgive, Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear this good news that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of, of power, power and, and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, friends, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as our Lord has taught and as together we say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as I surveyed the room... It looks as though we are okay to go to all six of our stations. So if those, <laughs> what's so funny about that? Y'all never seen a preacher shift on the fly? Oh, man. So if our servers would make their ways to their stations to prepare, I offer to you that this is indeed the body and blood of Christ given for us. Give us a moment to get our servers in place, and then we will share as guests at the table of the Lord. Friends, as our ushers direct you, let us be guests at the table of the Lord and receive these gifts of God. Come.
for my sermon today. I, I'm teasing. I'm not going to preach. Good grief, y'all. No. Although David Bailey is really glad he got bailed out of that Leviticus passage. Um, it's a great passage. No. <laughs> they think I'm going to preach up in the booth. That's enough. What I would have said, friends, and we're going to sing this song anyway, I wanted to introduce you to a hymn of Charles Wesley. You remember Charles? Charles is the brother, one of the brothers of John. Remember, there were 19 kids in that family. But like John Wesley, Charles was one of our founders, one of our Methodist founders. Charles was a hymn writer. John Wesley, it sometimes said, gave Methodism its structure, its force, and its passion. Charles Wesley gave Methodism its voice. The man wrote 6,000 hymns. 6,000 hymns. How many have you written? Not 6,000. Man wrote 6,000 hymns. He wrote, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. He wrote, Oh, 4,000 Tongues to Sing. He wrote, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. He wrote, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. He wrote, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. And about 5,995 more. 65 of which are in our United Methodist hymnal. He far outpaces anybody else in our hymnal, and yet that's 1% of everything he wrote. But, but the song we're going to sing in a minute, and the song around which we're basing this series for most of the month of May, is a hymn called, A Charge to Keep I Have. A charge to keep I have, a, glor- a God to glorify, a never-dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. A charge to keep, I have. Now, if you can get over the fact that Charles Wesley writes, kind of like Yoda talks, mm, a charge to keep, I have, that kind of thing. If you can get over that, then you can get down to business. The reason I had David read that passage from Leviticus was because it is the story of the ordination of Aaron, the brother of Moses, and Aaron's sons to the priesthood of God. And it is the passage, believe it or not, that inspired Charles Wesley to write the hymn that we're going to sing in just a minute. And for each of the weeks ahead, counting today, we're going to use one of the four of those, of each of the verses of this hymn to guide us. And this hymn is anchored in one idea, one idea that basically we are all called We are all charged with carrying out the ministry of Christ. We don't usually use that word in that way anymore. If you're charged with something, it's probably not good. Not so in the days of Wesley. In fact, when a pastor is is appointed to a place, they call it a charge. You know we have charge conferences. That's what that is. I am charged. Carlisle is charged. Sarah is charged. Vanna is charged with being your pastor, with serving this congregation. And us... We United Methodists, along with Charles Wesley, we understand a term you've heard before called the priesthood of all believers, which simply means that every baptized person, every Christian, not just folks who wear funny clothes on Sunday mornings or have REV in front of their names, that every baptized Christian is charged with the ministry of Christ. You know I'm concerned about what you do on a Sunday morning. I want you here. But did you know that as a, your pastor, I am even more concerned, more interested in what you do on a Monday morning or a Tuesday morning or Wednesday afternoon or Thursday at lunch or Friday or Saturday? I want you to be here on a Sunday, but I want you to take what you find here and carry it with you out into the world. And it's not just me. That's the charge we have to keep. That's the call. So whether you're a teacher or a banker, whether you're a farmer or a pharmacist, whether you build cars, whether you are a computer programmer or officer of the law, whether you're an attorney, whether you're a musician or a physician, no matter what you do, whether you're retired or actively working, unemployed or overemployed, you have a charge to keep from God. And as we enter into these next weeks together, that's the question we'll explore. And I said I wasn't going to preach, but I know I just did. (laughs) But that's my charge. Today, brothers and sisters, y'all sitting here calmly and peacefully, y'all were the body of Christ to the Jackson family. And we'll let you know how Donnie's doing. But I want to give thanks to you and thanks to God 
for the peace of God's spirit which rested upon this place. And I hope as God's people will take that out into the world. Will you sing with us as we prepare to hear and sing this song of Charles Wesley? Highland, tell us about it and lead us in singing. Well, I think Pastor Brian basically covered it. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to invite you to stand as we sing together a charge to keep I have. A charge to keep, we have us as a congregation, but you and me as individual followers of Jesus, to let the peace of Christ and the Spirit of Christ flow out of our lives and to share the burden of Christ's ministry. Although fresh from Holy Week and Easter, we know that the burden he bore for us far outweighs anything that we'll ever bear for him, which is why our burden is a joy. I give thanks to God for the presence of God's spirit we've seen this morning, and I send you out to be followers and doers in the name of Christ, to be servants blessed in the power of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who sends us forth in peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. It's been such an honor to worship with you as part of the congregation of Franklin First United Methodist Church. For information about how you can become connected with our community of faith, you can find us at franklinfumc.org. From there, you can sign up to receive our newsletter, find ways to serve, share your prayer requests, and make offerings that further the mission of this church. Please be sure and join us again next week. We'll be here at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.15. It's great to have you with us today. God bless you all. We hope you have a great week.
Hey! 
Holy God, we abandon ourselves into your hands. You are invited to gather. Do with us what you will. And to worship. Whatever you may do, we thank you. You are invited to grow. We are ready for all. We accept all. And to serve. Let only your will be done in us and in all your creatures. You are invited to receive. Into your hands, we commend our souls. 
and to praise. We offer them to you with all the love of our hearts, for we love you, Lord, and so need to surrender ourselves. You are invited to Franklin First, without reserve, United Methodist Church, and with boundless confidence. We're so glad that you're here with us today, for you are our creator. Welcome to worship. Amen. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to worship here at Franklin First United Methodist Church on this glorious Sunday morning. We're so excited that you are here with us today. It is always wonderful to be gathered together, whether you are joining us in person or via live stream. We are just grateful to be a part of your Sunday morning, and we are looking forward to worshiping alongside you. As we prepare ourselves for worship, I will invite you, if you would like to mark your attendance and let us know that you are here, you can do that using the Franklin First app, which you download on your smartphone. If you don't have that, then you can use the friendship, oh, excuse me, you can use the iPads you find out in Friendship Commons and just check in using your phone number. Now, if you're a visitor or maybe you have um, come a few times but not yet really met us in a deeper way and really got to know us, then we want to meet you and we would love to share more about who we are and learn more about you. And so if you are new, you can either type in the keyword coffee in the live stream, which lets us know that you're visiting, or you can meet us at the welcome tower after worship so that we can greet you and, and get to know you a little better and give you a little welcome goodie. So for anybody that is joining us today, whether you have been here many times or this is your first time, we are very grateful you're here and we are honored to be a part of your week. As we continue to move into worship, a few things that will take place today. First of all, it is the first Sunday of the month, so it's Communion Sunday, so we are excited to gather at the Lord's table You'll be guided through communion. Um, we'll have some stations up here. But if you are somebody that needs gluten-free elements, then please know that those are back in the entryway, the little foyer room in between here and Friendship Commons, our Narthex space. And so if you need gluten-free elements, know that they are back there. And if you are joining us via live stream, we want to make sure that you have your elements ready when that time comes. So gather your crackers and your juice, your bread, your wine, whatever you have on hand. Also during worship today, we are going to commission and pray over our new Stephen Ministers. So I wanted to highlight that ministry for a moment. Stephen Ministry is a care ministry. So these folks go through extensive training to walk um, through really tough seasons with folks. And it doesn't really matter what's going on in your life. If somebody says, I'm really struggling and I could use somebody to walk with me, to pray with me, and just be present with me, that is what our Stephen Ministers are here for. So today, as we're acknowledging them in worship, we also wanted to give you an opportunity to learn more about Stephen Ministry. So after worship, out by the welcome desk area, we'll have our Stephen Ministers available to answer your questions. And you might want to go learn more about a Stephen Minister because maybe you're sensing a calling to a care ministry. You'd like to learn more about what it's like to serve as a Stephen Minister. Or you can go and you can talk to them about what it might look like for you to be served by a Stephen minister one day. You can ask some questions about that and learn a little bit more about what that process looks like. So we're excited to celebrate our new Stephen ministers and want you to have the chance to learn a bit more. Also, want to bring your attention to Coffee and Conversations, one of our Adult Ministry Plus offerings, in which we bring in some experts to share about um, relevant topics. And so our topic for this month is the Silver Alert System. So you're probably aware of the Amber Alert System when there is a child missing. Silver Alert System is uh, an alert system that lets us know when somebody who has memory issues gets confused and, just, and finds themselves somewhere and they can't get back to where they need to be. So it's a very, very important, wonderful safety resource. Um, coffee and conversations, typically an evening and a daytime, but based on our expert schedule, it's only going to be a daytime offering. So make sure that you put this on your calendar May 6th at 10 o'clock in person or Zoom, and we hope that you can join us. And then finally, we have this week, this Tuesday, the three-year anniversary of 19 Miles. It's been three years since we kicked this off. So a very special um, three-year anniversary, 19 Miles, featuring Keith Thomas. Keith is a Grammy award-winning writer, and he's worked with um, just some small names like Vanessa Williams, Amy Grant. I don't know. Maybe you've heard of them. Just, just small names. So Keith is going to be here this Tuesday night. Now, I cannot say anything official. However, I know that there's a very special guest who will be here, and I have it on good authority that I can say you do not want to miss this 19 Miles. They're all wonderful. They're all such a great live music event here in Franklin, but this 19 Miles, you do not want to miss. That's all I'm going to say about that. 
As we move into worship today, I'll repeat what I said at the beginning. We are grateful to be a part of your Sunday morning, whether you've had a hectic week or a peaceful week or whatever is going on in your lives. That is all welcome in this place, and we are grateful to be gathered today. Welcome to worship. Welcome indeed, my friends. It is the beginning of a new month, the beginning of a new worship series. You can see the title of it there on the screen is A Charge to Keep. We're going to talk about God's call and purpose for our lives as ministers ourselves of Jesus Christ. So we'll share Holy Communion today. And um, I'm excited. I want to echo what Carlisle said, particularly about 19 miles, and just encourage you because, baby, baby, you never know who might show up. With every beat of my heart, I want to tell you, uh, every heartbeat, I want to tell you, baby, baby, you might want to come Tuesday night. Just, just never know who's going to be here in this very place. So grant me that little, little space to tell you that. Amy, I mean, amen. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Very good. Friends, we're so glad that you're here uh, and to worship together today. It's going to be a good day together. Um, we begin, as we always do, with prayer. I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able and to join me in a word of prayer that will be on the screens before us, an ancient prayer that will set the tone for what we'll share today. That's the wrong one, guys. Have you got one just next to that by chance? Got a little blue, blue thing around it. That's, that's the one. Outstanding. Would y'all pray this prayer with me? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I give you my hands to do your work. I give you my feet to walk in your way. I give you my tongue to speak your word. And I give you my heart that through me you may love the Father and every human soul today and always. Amen. Let's worship together. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. All your ways, all your ways are good. All your ways are sure.
Father, we ask this morning, Lord, that you would draw our hearts closer to you, Lord, so that we can follow you. Jesus, as you call us into the uncomfortable and into deeper things for our lives, we ask that you would be the light unto our feet. Be this for us this morning, Lord. Thank you that you call us deeper into your praises, deeper into your love. as if you're receiving something we're about to sing Lord send me move me so use this as a time of prayer to ask God what what does that mean for you in your life that the Lord would lead you
and we rest in that presence. Will you be seated, friends? We are, we do belong to the Lord. We are His, and He is ours. And He calls each one of us into a special kind of service. Today, we want to take just a moment, as Pastor Carlisle alluded to at the beginning of worship, to recognize some folks who have received not only a call but some special training in ministry to become Stephen ministers. Now, Carlisle told you about this ministry, but these are folks who now have special training to walk with their brothers and sisters through times of crisis, through moments of discerning God's presence in their lives, to do any number of things simply to walk as a faithful friend, to listen and to remind the folks they walk with, of Christ's own presence with them. You'll find them a lot of Sundays, nearly every Sunday really, in the little E.M. EM Bounds Chapel just beyond the, the entryway to this place, just there inside Friendship Commons. And they are there to welcome folks, to pray with folks, to simply be there as a reminder of Christ's presence. For nearly a year, they have trained now to do this work. So, We have folks with us here today, some who are already Stephen ministers, but others who are being commissioned. So would our commissioning class, would y'all mind to stand where you are? Can y'all see them? That's good. Turn around and let these fine people see y'all. That's good. There we go. We've recognized these folks at all three of our services today, but I want to name them for you now. Everybody, whether they're here at this service or whether they've needed to go home, um, this year's class of Stephen ministers being commissioned are as follows. Ed Cannon, Renee Finley, Brad Jensen, Deborah Lotz, Amy Martin, Jeff Miller, Susan Sanders, and Seal Waters. Now, Other folks who are already Stephen ministers, would you stand so folks can get a look at you too? These are folks, I know we got a few more. There we go. Absolutely wonderful. Marvelous, marvelous. Yeah, y'all can clap for these fine people. I want to give special thanks to Suzanne Knight and Andrea Thomas, who are sort of the leaders and coordinators of this group. We are so grateful for your ministry. Friends, we want to pray over these folks who enter into this new ministry. Would you pray with me as I offer these words? Lord, bless those who have felt a call to love and serve others through Stephen ministry. Grant them wisdom and listening hearts so that they may bring healing and hope to those whom they serve. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. One more time, would you recognize with me these Stephen ministers? It is a joy when we come to this time of offering to have folks standing before you showing and modeling what it might look like to serve as we come to this time in worship in which we really want to invite you to consider all the ways that God is offering for you to give back, to give of yourself, your presence in worship, our voices in praise, our hearts in prayer, our lives in service, but also the giving of our gifts trusting that when we give of our financial resources, that God is the one who receives these gifts, the one who takes these gifts and can multiply them and and make wonderful things in our world with the gifts that we bring. And so I'll remind you, there are several ways in which you can make a financial offering or offer your tithe on this Sunday morning. Our Franklin First website, you can see the link on your screen, or the Franklin First app, both of those give you the option to make a one-time gift, or if you would like to set up a recurring gift that's automated in case you forget. Somebody like me really benefits from that option, making sure that I don't forget. That is one way that you can give. We have offering stations in the corners of this room in uh, Wesley Hall, as well as when you make your way back into Friendship Commons. 
You can always mail your tithe or offering or leave them in the secure lockbox outside the circle drive. And also today, we will begin again the, um, the tradition of passing the plates down the, down the aisles. So even if you have a, an online gift that you make or you want to put your gift in the um, baskets, then you can just still pass the plate down. But we're excited to have that uh, continued practice of reflecting on our offering, getting to connect with our neighbors in a very small way, just passing a plate down to those that we sit with and worship. So as always, whatever you are able to give, however you are able to give, we trust and believe in the one who receives it, the one who leads us where our faith has no board, the one who, who opens our lives, the one who calls us and invites us and sends us in ministry. God is the one who receives these gifts, and God is the one who will take these gifts and bless them. So if you would, please join me so we can say a prayer of blessing over our offering today. Let us pray. Spirit, lead us where our trust is without borders. As you call us to go, Lord, help us to follow you. And however it is that you call us, let us be faithful in our responses, whether you are calling us into service, into a witness of your ministry, but Lord, you call us on this day all into the work of giving of ourselves, of giving back to you, of laying our resources down at the foot of the cross as an act of worship, as an act of praise, and as an act of sacrifice. And in doing so, Lord, we offer ourselves to you, we humble ourselves before you, and we give you these gifts because we love you, Lord, and we trust you. And so God, as we open our hands, we ask that you would receive the offerings that we bring before you and that you would bless them and take these gifts and multiply them and continue to build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. You turn it over tables and call it for return. You kiss upon the altar the things we did at first. You're cleaning out the dirt All your territory Lord, we are your church We are your people You are our God We are your temple Make us holy like you Set us apart, oh God, for your glory. 
temple, make us holy like you are. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him. like to invite you to remain standing as we hear our scripture reading for this morning, which comes from the book of Leviticus, the eighth chapter, verses 22 through 36. Then he brought forward the second ram, the ram of ordination. Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram and it was slaughtered. Moses took some of its blood and put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear and on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. After Aaron's sons were brought forward, Moses put some of the blood on the lobes of their right ears and on the thumbs of their right hands and on the big toes of their right feet. And Moses dashed the rest of the blood against all sides of the altar. He took the fat, the broad tail, and all the fat that was around the entrails, the appendage of the liver, and the two kidneys with their fat, and the right thigh. From the basket of unleavened bread that was before the Lord, he took one cake of unleavened bread one cake of bread with oil and one wafer and placed them on the fat and on the right thigh. He placed all these on the palms of Aaron and on the palms of his sons and raised them as an elevation offering before the Lord. Then Moses took from their hands and turned them into smoke on the altar with the burnt offering. This was an ordination offering for a pleasing odor an offering by fire to the Lord. Moses took the breast and raised it as an elevation offering before the Lord. It was Moses' portion of the ram of ordination, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood that was on the altar and sprinkled them on Aaron and his vestments, and also on his sons and their vestments. Thus he consecrated Aaron and his vestments, and also his son and their vestments. And Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Boil the flesh at the entrance of the tent of meeting, And eat it there with the bread that is in the basket of ordination offerings, as I was commanded. Aaron and his sons shall eat it. And what remains of the flesh and the bread you shall burn with fire. You shall not go outside the entrance of the tent meeting for seven days until the day when your period of ordination is completed. For it will take seven days to ordain you, as it has been done today. The Lord has commanded to be done to make atonement for you. You shall remain at the entrance of the tent of meeting day and night for seven days, keeping the Lord's charge so that you do not die. For so I am commanded, Aaron and his sons did all the things that the Lord commanded through Moses. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. You may be seated, my friends. Didn't Carlisle do a good job with that long, long passage? Mercy. Yeah, somebody wanted to clap for you, Carlisle. That's good. I'd clap for her. She did a good job. Absolutely. She did a fine job. An outstanding job of reading from Leviticus. She did a great job. The question is, why in the world would I have had y'all listen to her read what we just heard? Did y'all hear it? I mean, it's long. It's weird. Frankly, it's kind of graphic. And it's from Leviticus of all places. Come on, did y'all read Leviticus already today? I bet the answer is no. I mean, I'm not saying you haven't read that passage before. I mean, if you've read through the Bible, which I'm sure many of, of you have, if you've read through the Bible, I mean, you've read it. You've read that passage. 
But honestly, do you think anyone has claimed this passage from Leviticus as like a guiding passage or like a life verse they read at the first thing of every day or they, they got it tattooed on their forearm or something like that? If you're going to write the whole thing, you'd need both arms and up and down. I mean, you know, I have not researched this. But y'all know the little upper room prayer booklets? You can get them the first of every month or so out, out on, in the narthex there. The little upper room prayer. I haven't researched this, but I would, I would almost be willing to bet that devotionals in the upper room prayer devotion magazine have focused on Leviticus 8, 22 to 36, precisely zero times in the history of of that fine little book. For goodness sake, y'all, the big toe of Moses' brother Aaron gets mentioned here. How many of when you got up today thought, this is the day big toe gets a shout out in worship for what? None of you did that. It's just so odd, right? So why read this today? Why read this today? Well, I'll tell you. In large part, it's this guy's fault. This guy right here, his name is Charles Wesley. To the right is a younger portrait of him, and to the left is an older portrait, one that that I'm more familiar with. But that's Charles Wesley. Do you remember Charles Wesley? Now, see, I bet you do. I bet a lot of you do. Charles, as you recall, was one of the brothers. And remember, there were 19 kids in the family. Charles was one of the brothers, a younger brother, of a fellow named John Wesley about whom we talked a lot back during our March worship series on what it means to be Methodist. You remember John Wesley and an occasional mention of Charles. Now, along with John, Charles was one of the founders, really, of what became the Methodist movement. You probably remember I've shown you this picture several times, the Holy Club back at Oxford University in England, and there's Charles on the right along with John on the left. And um, these guys really started, helped to start what would become the Methodist movement. Now, Charles, like John, was a priest in the Church of England. And in early Methodism, just like John, Charles also preached and taught and was a leader. Though more than anything, more than anything, Charles Wesley was known and is still known for what? For his hymns, for the songs he wrote. If John Wesley gave Methodism its direction and structure and passion, then Charles Wesley gave Methodism its voice. Charles Wesley gave Methodism its voice. Charles wrote hymns. Do you know how many he wrote? He wrote 6,000 hymns. 6,000. How many have you written? 6,000 hymns, and you know some of them. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Love divine, all loves excelling. When Advent gets here, we're going to sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. That's Charles. You know, Hark the Herald Angels Sing at Christmas time. That's Charles. A few weeks ago at Easter, we sang, Christ the Lord is risen today. Guess who? Charles Wesley. Now, those are just five of more than 65 of his hymns, poems, and responses that are by Charles Wesley in our United Methodist hymnal, just the main hymnal. He easily outpaces any other writer in our songbook. And still, with 65 hymns and poems and prayers and responses, that's still just what, like barely 1% of everything he wrote. What an amazing and gifted servant of God, 6,000 hymns. Now, no, not every one he wrote hit the top 10. Even back in his day of the 1700s, to my knowledge, Amy Grant, for instance, just to pull a name totally out of the air, has not recorded any of his songs. I don't know that to be true, actually. His, his, his poems and hymns are theologically rich. They are deep. And sometimes that's beautiful and awesome. And sometimes the fact that they are theologically rich and deep makes for some challenges in the old singability department. But there is no denying, singable or not, Charles Wesley has shaped the heart of Methodism and Methodists. 
And I named maybe like his five best known and most beloved hymns. But there are lots of others, as I noted, that, that don't reach just that level of popularity. Although I will say, one of those, shall we call it, less popular hymns of Charles Wesley is actually what spurred me on to have us take a look at this passage from Leviticus 8 that Carlisle read for us today. In fact, Leviticus 8 is the source that inspired Charles Wesley to write the hymn that I'm going to tell you about, of which you'll hear a lovely version of later on. This hymn is called A Charge to Keep I Have. A Charge to Keep I Have. It is number 413 in our good old United Methodist hymnal. The big picture on the right there, that is a shot from, from my very own hymnal that I keep in my office. And it is at the heart of this new worship series that we begin today and go on through the next several weeks of May. Over the next four Sundays, counting today, the words of this little hymn are going to speak to us. Now, it's a short hymn, you know, ha-ha, yay, good, we like short. It's a short hymn. It may feel a little choppy sometimes when you sing it. This will be beautiful today. But, but it's a powerful song. It's a powerful song. And in its heart, this hymn is anchored in one primary belief. This hymn is anchored in something called the priesthood of all believers. You know about this, the priesthood of all believers. You might remember that phrase from several weeks ago when we talked about the ministry and what ministry means in the United Methodist Church. We talked about this. The priesthood of all believers is the idea that every single Christian, every single Christian is called to and responsible for the ministry of Jesus Christ, called to and responsible for the ministry of Jesus Christ. Yes, I know, we have pastors, we have ministers, people who are ordained, licensed for that kind of work. But the overall work of Christian ministry, hear me now, the overall work of Christian ministry, the far-reaching work of Christian ministry, the work of sharing and living out the gospel is, and I want to be totally clear on this, it is not confined to people who are ordained or who happen to have REV or reverend in front of their name. The work of Christian ministry, the work of sharing and living out the gospel is not confined to people who are ordained or have REV in front of their name. The work of ministry is entrusted to us, not in ordination, but in our baptism. The work of ministry is entrusted to us, not in ordination. That's the setting aside of some folks for special work. The work of ministry is entrusted to us by God, not in ordination, but in our baptism. Every baptized person Every Christian, every disciple of Jesus Christ is responsible for ministry. Hear that. Every baptized person, every Christian, every disciple. That's what the priesthood of all believers means, is responsible for the ministry of Jesus Christ. Every baptized person. That is the priesthood of all believers. That is who we are. And that is a fundamental declaration of Charles Wesley's little hymn that I'm introducing to you. This is what verse 1 of this hymn says. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never-dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. Look at that. Soak it in for a minute. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never-dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. Now, if you can get over if you can get over the fact that Charles Wesley wrote a little bit like Yoda taught, mm, the charge to keep I have. Mm. See what I mean? It's a pretty good Yoda, right? It's easily the best one you've heard this morning, right? Right. A charge, if you can get over the fact that Wesley wrote a little like Yoda talks, if you can get over that, then we can get down to business. Because the very title of this hymn comes from where? Our passage today, right from Leviticus chapter 8, verse 35. 
You heard it. This long and odd passage is the conclusion, I'm sure you could tell, of a ceremony in which Aaron, the brother of Moses, and Aaron's sons are being ordained, designated as priests before God and on behalf of the people of ancient Israel. And with this ordination, Moses delivers a final instruction to Aaron. Moses says to him, you shall remain at the entrance of the tent of meeting. This is where folks gathered to worship and pray. You shall remain at the entrance of the tent of meeting day and night for seven days, keeping the Lord's charge. Get it? Keeping the Lord's charge so that you do not die, for so I am commanded. And there it is, keeping the Lord's charge charge. Aaron is bound with keeping the Lord's charge. As part of his service before God, he is to keep the Lord's charge. And in that little verse, in that little piece of this long passage, Charles Wesley, as poets and preachers are inclined to do, Charles Wesley found an inspiration, an inspiration from the Spirit of God and he runs with it, and here comes a charge to keep I have. And this is what Charles's hymn tells us. We have a responsibility to God. Us collectively, for sure. You hear about that all the time. And you and me individually, we have a responsibility to God. Collectively and there's no saying, well, they've got this covered, so I'm just going to leave it with them. No, you and you and y'all and me individually, we have responsibilities before God. We have a charge. And I know that's not a word we use in that way very much these days. It's sort of an odd thing, starting to feel a little antiquated to talk about it this way. I mean, honestly, if you're charged with something today... It's usually not pretty, that's not good, right? You're thinking I'm in the police blotter or something like that. No, no, this is an older way of thinking about it. Although, do you know that United Methodist pastors, when we are appointed to a church, that's called our charge. We have a charge conference sometimes. So Franklin First is my charge. Pastor Carlisle's charge. Pastor Vanna's charge. Pastor Sarah's charge. That's a word we still use. We have a charge. It's actually really powerful. We are, we are charged with, entrusted with, we are burdened with, we are called to live our lives as servants of God. And if Charles Wesley is right, then the fact that we are charged with that, that we have a charge to keep from God, that is and should be the most important thing about us. The fact that we, that you, that I have a charge from God to carry out the ministry of Christ should color, should influence, should shape, should inform, should direct every single thing we do. Every single thing. Now you know, this will not be a stretch, you know I am interested in what you do on a Sunday morning, right? We're all clear about that. I am interested and concerned about what you do on a Sunday morning, but did you know Moving from this idea of the priesthood of all believers, moving from this thought that we all have a charge to keep, did you know, and I'm not just being nosy, did you know that I also have a deep interest in what you do on Monday morning, and how you are on Tuesday morning, and what you do Wednesday afternoon, and what you do all day Thursday, and what you do Friday evening, and what you do on Saturday. It's not just here. What we do here now should shape us, not so we can check a box and say, well, I was at church Sunday, which is great but so that being here and taking this in shapes the person that we are on Monday and Tuesday, and you get it. Whatever we are, however we are, however we spend our days, whatever our vocation or profession, wh whatever our situation, we are charged to live out the gospel in what we do. If you are a teacher, if you are a parent, if you are a banker, if you are a farmer, if you are in sales, if you are retired, if you are in school, if you are an engineer, if you are a programmer, if you are an officer of the law, if you are an attorney, if you are in retail, if you make cars, 
if you are a gardener, if you are a chef, if you are a builder, if you're in real estate, if you're a designer, if you're a beautician, if you're a dentist, if you're a musician, if you're a physician, if you are a volunteer, if you are a philanthropist, if you're unemployed, if you're overemployed, whatever you do, if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you are a servant of God. And that means God has a charge for you to keep. A charge to keep. And not only that, a charge that will serve the Lord and that in keeping that charge will prepare you for eternal life, for heavenly life, for everlasting life with God. And my question simply is, Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Can you accept that God has a charge for you? Do you believe it and will you receive it? You belong to God. You belong to God. I am yours. And he is mine. You belong to God, and that means God has a responsibility for you to attend to, a role for you to fulfill, a charge for you to keep. And this is where we begin. This is where so much begins. Will you keep the charge God has for you? We'll try to unfold it more in the coming weeks, but this is where we start. Will you keep the charge God has for you? A charge to keep I have. A God to glorify. A never dying soul to save. And fit it for the sky. Not only does God call us, God nourishes us. And one of the ways and places we are nourished is at the table of the Lord. So we'll share Holy Communion today. In just a moment, folks will move to to begin to prepare. We'll have three stations for communion. One over here to my right. There's We marked it with tape on the carpet over here, okay? So the plan is for everybody in this section, you may remember this from last time. This is just the second month we've sort of done this back in the old routine. If, you're, if you guys are in this section, you'll go to your left and come and receive communion there and then return this way. You're welcome to stop and pray at the altar rails. This section, middle folks, you'll be right here. There's blue tape right here with a two on it, so I'm not there anymore. I'm back here. But anyway, it'll be right here. You'll come here. Folks over here on the left, you're welcome to come here. There's another mark here where the station will be. Not only do we have Holy Communion today, we are also reinstating, rebeginning our offering baskets that go with Holy Communion. So we have a communion offering in, in addition to our regular offering today. That always goes to one of our mission partners. Today's offering will go to Project Transformation. You might know Project Transformation. Founded, the founding executive director of Project Transformation is our own Courtney Aldrich. Um, This is a ministry that many of you have participated in. It is a ministry that that brings college-age folks in as interns who help young kids in various neighborhoods across Middle Tennessee keep up their reading skills during the summer. They also engage with families in ministry and fun. You may have helped with a family fun night. You may have gone to read with kids. If you are so moved to bring an offering, when you come to Holy Communion, it will go to Project Transformation today. So I'm going to invite Pastor Carlisle and Pastor Vaughn. If they'll come and attend to the table, I'm going to move my stuff here off to the side. And in a moment, the words that will lead us through Holy Communion will appear, and together we'll be guests at the table of the Lord. Would you join me in the liturgy? That leads us through Holy Communion. Brothers and sisters, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another as together we pray and say, Merciful Merciful God, God, we confess confess that we have have not not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We have failed failed to be be an obedient church. church. We have have not not done done your will. will. We have have broken broken your law. law. We have rebelled rebelled against against your love. 
We have, we have not, not loved our neighbors. neighbors. We, have we have not, not heard, heard the cry of the needy. Of the needy. Forgive, Forgive us, we pray. pray. Free us for, for joyful obedience. obedience. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear this good news. That Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and, heaven and earth are full of your glory, glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the, in the highest. highest, blessed, blessed is, is he who comes in the name, name of the Lord, Lord. Hosanna yeah, in, in the, the highest. highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and everywhere you are worshipped today. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as our Lord has taught and as together we say, Our Father, Father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. Lead, Lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the gifts of God, the body and blood of Christ given for us. I'll invite those who will help to serve to make their way to the table to receive the elements. And then when they are in place, as the ushers direct, we'll invite you to come and receive these gifts of God. the table of Christ is set and you are invited. Will you come?
the charge to keep we have. Nurtured and nourished by the body and blood of Christ, we go to carry the burden of Christ in ministry to the world. But you know, having just come from Holy Week and Easter, we know the burden that Christ bore for us far outweighs whatever we may do for him. So we do what we do with joy and with gladness as we fulfill the charge God has for us. May you receive that charge and may you carry it with joy in your heart as we serve the living Christ. Would you stand as you're able? And Alonka and the team are going to introduce a song I think you've heard something about in a special and beautiful way. Church, as we get ready to sing this gorgeous hymn, A Charge to Keep, we have written a little refrain to it. And you'll be prompted, men and women, there's a call and response that we, we will each sing. We're going to sing it for you a couple of times, and then we'll go ahead and into the hymn. It sounds like this. And I will watch and pray. And I will watch and pray. and pray we'll rely on nothing else and you alone and you alone I will watch and pray I will rely on nothing else I will watch and pray I will rely on nothing else and I will watch and pray I will
charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never-dying soul to save, and fit it for the sky. We go in the knowledge that we go to serve the living Christ. We go knowing he goes before us. We go knowing he has called us to share in his ministry. So go as priests of the living God, as ministers of Christ. Go in the name and the power of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and go in peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. It's been such an honor to worship with you as part of the congregation of Franklin First United Methodist Church. For information about how you can become connected with our community of faith, you can find us at franklinfumc.org. From there, you can sign up to receive our newsletter, find ways to serve, share your prayer requests, and make offerings that further the mission of this church. Please be sure and join us again next week. We'll be here at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.15. It's great to have you with us today. God bless you all. We hope you have a great week.